Vaya. ¿Usted de Santa Ana, entonces? No. Hello, no. teacher. Good Hello. evening. Can you hear me? Hi, teacher. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes okay. teacher. Because here is telling me that I don't have an audio. I don't know why. So weird. <laughs> How are you? Fine, teacher. But a little tired. Oh, me too, me too. But fine. <laughs> but you're a doctor, right, Patricia? Yes, teacher, I am a gynecologist. A gynecologist. Nice, yes. that's so cool. I work uh, with uh, only women. With only women. When I go when I go to the gynecologist, I ask for only uh, lady doctors. I don't like to go with men doctors. <laughs> okay. I mean, for me, it doesn't make sense because I mean they are men, so it doesn't make sense because they don't have the same system, the same body, and women no. Right. They don't. They don't understand. Uh -huh, they don't understand <laughs> our body. Right. So that's why I ask. I always yeah. ask for a woman. Hi, Adrian. Hello, Zeris. Hi there. We have missed you so much. Uh, I've been sick this day with flu and the unavailable to speak well. Oh. Is. I am ready now. It's a continuous class. <laughs> to continue class. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. We have Patricia. We have uh, Azucena and Adrian. You receive a message today that you have to work on, on section three, right? So today we're going to go over that uh, section. Tell me, please, if you have questions. Uh, about section three, and then I can help you out, right? Yes, teacher. Okay, teacher. I I couldn't complete the, the section three because I had some problems with um and undirected question. Oh, okay. And and I try all the answers uh, can be possible, but it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Okay. You can go ahead and work with that because comparisons, I think that are very easy, right? Comparisons are very easy to continue, to work with. So let's go ahead and work with section three. Now, another thing, today and tomorrow, we're going to work with uh, section three, right? I know that Fridays you don't have classes, but since we miss Monday, we're supposed to cover that day tomorrow. So if you can uh, connect at 8 p.m., please do. Right, please. Tomorrow. Okay. So. Now, hi, Cody. Hi, Rosa. Hi, teacher. Hi, hi. Glad to see you all. Um, hi, me as well. Hi, teacher. <laughs> now, we have a questions, <laughs> indirect questions, you said, right? <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Now, we're going to go right now because uh, for Patricia, Patricia, right? And for Azucena, indirect okay. questions are a little bit difficult. That's on a section 3.8. So we're going to cover that. Of course, we're going to watch the videos and then we're going to be making our own examples. Now, one trick for indirect questions, Azucena, is that they just have you just start with a question like, could you, I was wondering, right? But they have like a sentence form, right? So let's go ahead and work on that. And I would like you to tell me also if you have any other questions related to the other topics, right? <laughs> now let's just start with indirect questions today. That will be in section three. Uh, uh, 
Tan, tan, tan. Can you see the, can you see the, uh, the computer? Yes, teacher. Yes. Yes. Uh, we're going to go over this later on, right? We're just gonna cover the direct questions right now, right? And then we ask questions, okay? Now let's just start with indirect questions introduced by the word that, right? That's what we're going to work with. Please pay attention, right? And make sure that we make our own examples. Be ready to answer too, okay? Can you listen to this? Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you're- Yes, teacher. teacher. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, listen. I'm going to put myself on mute, okay? And we pay attention. To learn how to make indirect requests. We will focus on turning statements into indirect requests. Now let's discuss what indirect requests are. So indirect requests means that you want to give a message to someone who is not present or not available. Let's say for example you call a person and the person is not there um, and you leave a message for that person. Well this is what we call an indirect request. So let me present some structure. If you see the chart on the screen, we can see how this structure changes depending on the type of sentence. So if we have statements, imperatives, yes and no questions, and WH questions, those will be different whenever we change them to indirect requests. Uh, now I'll be discussing this individually. Uh, and then um, we're going to try to make sense of all of them together. The idea is to be able to make uh, to, to take any kind of um, sentence and then change that to a form of indirect request. So in this particular lesson, we're going to focus with the first one, with statements. So as we can see, um, statements are quite easy to change, right? We have a statement there, Jeff, Tony's having a party. So that statement, we change it to an in indirect request. You call, um, maybe, uh, maybe Jeff, uh, Jeff the assistant. Uh, and uh, you want to give a message to him because he was not available. And then you you um, you tell um, the assistant, uh, could you tell Jeff that Tony is having a party? All right. So it's quite easy, right? We just kind of like introduce, could you tell? And here we're going to introduce uh, the person who uh, that message is for. So remember that what you're doing is you're leaving a message with Jeff's assistant, uh, and then. Jeff assistant will doing will then give that message to him. So it's quite simple, right? So what we want to do is uh, we want to um, uh, leave um, quite a few messages for Jeff, uh, and then we want to practice changing those statements into indirect requests. In this case, we're going to practice uh, changing those uh, statements to indirect requests introduced by uh, that. So the first one that we can see there is, okay, Jeff, uh, Tony is having a party. That's the message. Uh, so how would I give the message to the receptionist or to his assistant? Um, could you tell Jeff that Tony is having a party? By the way, the reason you see that in parentheses is because that is optional. That means that you can either say, could you tell Jeff Tony is having a party? Or you could just include it. You could say, could you tell Jeff that Tony is having a party? So let's write a couple of other um, uh, statements, if you will. All right, and these are messages that I want to give uh, to uh, Jeff's uh, receptionist. Right? Uh, let me. I'll change the size a little bit so that you can see that pretty clear. So how do we change this? Can you see the screen? No teacher. No teacher. Only listen no, to the audio. What? Oh, now I do. Now, now, yes. Next statement, I Jeff, mean, Tony is going to invite everyone from work. All right, okay. so once again, we want to deliver the message. We want to leave the message with the receptionist. So how would I, get, and then we want to practice change uh, and. Uh, We're working with the first one, the statement, okay? We're gonna go back a little bit and let's share. Let me know, please, if you can say it. You want to give a message to him because he was not available. And then you, you, um, you tell um, the assistant, uh, could you tell Jeff that Tony is having a party? All right, so it's quite easy, right? We just kind of like introduce, could you tell? And here we're going to introduce uh, the person who uh, that message is for. 
So remember that what you're doing is you're leaving a message with Jeff's assistant. Uh, and then Jeff's assistant will, do, will then give that message to him. So it's quite simple, right? So what we want to do is uh, we want to um, uh, leave um, quite a few messages for Jeff. Uh, and then we want to practice changing those statements into indirect requests. In this case, we're going to practice uh, changing those uh, statements to indirect requests introduced by uh, that. So the first one that we can see there is, okay, Jeff, uh, Tony is having a party. That's the message. Uh, so how would I give the message to the receptionist or to his assistant? Um, could you tell that Tony is having a party? By the way, the reason you see that in parentheses is because that is optional. That means that you can either say, could you tell Jeff Tony is having a party? Or you could just include it. You could say, could you tell Jeff that Tony is having a party? So let's write a couple of other um, uh, statements, if you will. All right, And these are messages that I want to give uh, to uh, Jeff's uh, receptionist. Right? Uh, let me, I'll change the size a little bit so that you can see that. Based on what he just said there, Jeff, go, Tony is going to invite everyone for work and we're using the first one that is a statement right how would you do that we're using the first part is could you tell right could you tell right so what are we doing here right could you tell jeff that tony is going to invite everyone for work right so what happens there is that the statement actually becomes, right? The statement becomes a question by using could you, right? Could you? That would be the question part. Now let's continue. Let's see what happens there. Pretty clear. So how do we change this next statement? Jeff, Tony is going to invite everyone from work. All right, so once again, we want to deliver the message. We want to leave the message with the receptionist. So um, could you tell Jeff that Tony is going to invite everyone from work? So basically, the only thing that we did um, is if you see, this is the message, right? And what we did is we just pretty much sort of like have the same thing. We only added, and I'm going to highlight that in red. We only added, could you tell Jeff that, right? Because that, the message is for Jeff once again, right? Could you tell Jeff that Tony is going to invite everyone from work? And I'll highlight that in yellow so you can see. So this was the only thing that we added. And we're going to do the same thing for other kind of statements. Uh, and so let's play around with other kinds of statements real quick. Um, let's see, something related to a party, right? And we want to give. Can you see the screen? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Give the message to Jeff. But this is was some minutes ago, teacher. All right. Um, At the beginning of the video. Okay. Um, so let me change the size a little bit. So Jeff, Tony is going to have a lot of food and drinks at the party. So how can we change this to an indirect request or an indirect message? Well, first of all, I mentioned that um, at this point, because everything is directed towards uh, Jeff, uh, we want to say, could you tell Jeff that? And we're simply going to copy this, as you can see. right? And by the way, uh, something that I forgot to do was I just forgot to add this question mark here, right? Okay, there we go. Uh, so it's quite simple as you can see, right? Uh, let's do one more. Um, what's the message? Well, I want to also give another message to Jeff and this message is gonna be all right um, Tony is gonna have a DJ who is gonna play all kinds of music right 
So once again, what is it that we want to do? Well, uh, quite simple. We're going to just borrow this. Could you tell Jeff that? All right. And we're simply going to just uh, the, the message. We don't change much on the message at this point, right? It's pretty much the same thing. Uh, so could you tell Jeff that Tony is going to have a DJ who's going to play all kinds of music, right? That's the message that I want to give to uh, to Jeff. Okay, perfect. Now, in this case, in the first one, we were just transmitting, right, a message from, that it was a message from Tony to Jeff, right? So we were like receptionists and we were providing that message to someone else. But in reality, what we do is that we, instead of using regular form, question form, what we do is that we make an indirect question, right? So. I have a question. My question is, and remember, we're using, could you tell me, or could you tell someone, right? Could you tell someone? In this case, you're going to tell me, right? Joseph for Tony Miss Good. Okay, so <laughs> uh, we're going to go, I'm going to give you questions, okay? questions and you are going to use and we're going to use the chat you're going to use can you i'm going to share my give me a moment i'm going to share my computer okay I don't see. Stop share. There we are. Okay. Okay. Now we'll make it. This is going to be a direct question. And this is going to be the indirect question that you are going to get me. Okay. Now, like I said, in the video, it's a little bit complicated because we have, we're like a third party providing the information. We're like secretaries, right? Providing the information from someone else. But in reality, what the way to learn indirect questions better is to have a question and they make that question an indirect question. For example, we have, is he Spanish? Is he Spanish? This is a direct question. Ver, ver B in this case, right? Ver B, subject complement. That's the regular question form. But here with the indirect question, we're gonna use, could you tell, could you, could you tell, and this is someone, right? Me, Patricia, Cory, them, my family, right? That, right? Now, instead of that, we can also use he. Right, so we're gonna make here, right? Right, and remember that this is optional, right? So what are we gonna do? We're gonna say here, could you tell me if he is Spanish? We can use if. Could you tell me, could you tell Azucena that he is Spanish? Right, we can make like this. Or if we want to transmit a message, I'm gonna give him, I'm going to be right now, uh, Patricia's secretary, right? No, I'm, I'm the patient, right? I'm the patient. Uh, 
this is this is the message right i am going to go to the clinic until next week right so remember these are two forms let me make it okay now this is direct question and this is how we can make them now let's go with the message type i'm going to go to the clinic until next week you're giving this message to patricia so it will be could you tell who could you tell Patricia? Right. That Sylvia is going to the clinic until next week. Until next week. Right. We have it there, right? Teacher going to or going to go? It's going to go. Yes, thank you. It's not. Okay. It's going to go. The clinic until next week, right? Now, we got there. What could be another message that we can transmit? Mm -hmm. Let me see. I'm gonna give you a message. Tell my mother this, please. How can you tell this to my mother? I will not visit her this weekend. Uh -huh. How can you tell this to my mom? Could you tell, could, could you tell my, mom my mom that I will not visit her this coming weekend? Very good. Could you tell my mom that I will not visit her this coming weekend? Very good. Very good. Hey, Patricia, could you tell my mom that, I'm not, that I will not visit her this coming weekend? because I will not be able to transmit the message. Patricia will be able to, right? Very good. So that's what statement are, right? Let's go, I think the infinitives are a little bit more difficult. Let's take a look at them, okay? And tell me, please, if you cannot see the video, tell me, tell me, okay? Now we go with infinitives. This is the second part. Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you'll learn how to make indirect requests. In this class, we will focus on turning imperatives into indirect requests. We use indirect requests when you want to give a message to someone who is not present or not available. Well, let's say, for example, you call a person and the person is not there, uh, but uh, maybe the assistant or a receptionist answers the phone. So you leave a message with that person. This is what we call an indirect request. So let me present the structure. If you see the chart on the screen, we can see how the structure changes depending on the type of sentence. So for example, if we have statements, which is what we saw in our previous class, uh, then this statements will change in this form, right? Could you tell Jeff that Tony is having a party, or could you tell Jeff Tony is having a party? Um, so we did a lot of practice with this in our previous lesson. Today we're going to focus, or we're going to um, pay close attention to imperatives. Uh, so we're going to have a series of imperatives, and we will be changing those to uh, indirect requests using uh, infinitives. If you can see on the screen, we're going to uh, take this imperative. And um, so the imperative is, Jeff, don't be late. <laughs> now this, we're going to turn it into an indirect request by using infinitives. And so the way that we will do this is that we will use can you tell plus the object. And then we'll use an infinitive. This infinitive could be in a negative form or it could also be in a positive form. Uh, so let me just quickly point out the structure that we're going to be using. Um, all right, uh, so I mentioned uh, we're going to use could. Um, this can also be can, by the way. 
and uh, then we're going to use um, a subject there. It could be you, but uh, it could be any other subject as well, right? And then uh, typically we're, we will use the verb tell, and then I mentioned this is going to be followed by the object. The object is who are we giving that message to? So for example, in this case, it happens to be Jeff. Um, and after that, we will use um, an infinitive, as I mentioned. Uh, this could be in the form of a negative infinitive. Uh, so in this case, uh, let's just take that example there. Sorry to interrupt you. Here, we are going to practice with imperatives. Do you remember imperatives? They just give commands. Like pay attention, close, uh, close your eyes, listen to Stand up. Right, stand up. Turn off, turn on exactly. the light. Exactly. Those are uh -huh. open. Okay, perfect. So we're gonna do that. Um, can you? And I will tell the object it's Jeff. All right. And in this case, uh, this happens to be a negative one. So we will say not to be late. And then we'll put a question mark. And that's how we would change um, an imperative into an indirect request. So now let's say that the imperative is different. OK, now we're going to I'm going to give an example of a positive one. So what would be that? Well, maybe we want to give a message to Jeff. Jeff was not there, so but we talked to the uh, to his assistant. So uh, bring some uh, drinks for the party. All right, that's the message that we want to give to Jeff. This is in the form of an imperative. So how do we go about changing this into um, an indirect request? Well, again, we mentioned we will use could, and then we'll use you. Uh, in this case, we will use the verb tell. The object I mentioned is Jeff. All right, so we will say, could you tell Jeff? And if you notice, this is not in a negative form, so therefore we will not use not, okay? And we will simply use the infinitive form. Could you tell, could you tell Jeff to bring some drinks for the party? There we go. Um, and this is what I refer to, or this is what we refer to whenever we say that that's an infinitive, right? So um, it, to bring. Um, or not to, uh, and then the verb, right? So if we have a negative form, we will use not to, and then the verb. If we have a positive form, we will say to, and then plus the verb. That's what we mean by that. So could you tell Jeff to bring some drinks for the party? And that's how we turn that imperative into an indirect request. Okay, we're going to share here uh, with imperatives, right? We're going to put here, right? Okay, this is the imperative, right? This is the imperative. Adrian, bring some drinks to the party. We're having a party, Adrian, on Saturday. So Adrian, bring some drinks to the party. Now, Adrian is not here. Okay, give me a moment. I'm gonna put my, my head to speak as it's raining. Okay, Adrian is not here, right? So you are going to tell Adrian this message because he cannot listen to me because he's not here, he's in the supermarket. How can you tell this to him? How can I, how can I say this indirectly? Uh-huh. Could you tell, could you, could you tell me that Adrian brings some drinks to the party? Could you tell me or could, could you tell Adrian? Could you tell Could Adrian? You tell Adrian? Could you tell Adrian to bring to bring to some bring drinks to the party? Some drinks to the party. Right? Very good. You're telling you're telling someone. Very good. Uh,
Cody, go to the supermarket. How can we make this? According to the structure that we received today. Could you tell? Could you tell Cody? Could you tell Cody to go, go to, to the, the supermarket? supermarket? Could you tell Cory to go to the supermarket? To go to the supermarket? Now let's to make a negative. Uh -huh. Could you tell Cody to go to the supermarket? Very good. Now we're gonna go here and we're gonna say, Patricia, don't open the new air fryer. How can we say this to Patricia? Could you tell Patricia? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't to open the new air fryer. Okay, don't to open the new air fryer. I love air fryers, they are awesome. The new air fryer. Could you tell Patricia, don't to open the new air fryer? Uh, close, close, Patricia. What is the change that we should make over there, guys? We have to use two. Ah? Huh? We have to use two. Two, okay. We we'll use Don't two. open. Don't to open. Don't open. Don't mm -hmm. open. Don't to open. So I should delete this. We tell Patricia, don't open the new air fryer. Ah, uh, no. Mm -mm -mm. Not, Not to, to do. Not to open. Not to open. Not to open. To do, to do not to open. Okay, look at this. This is the way. Could you tell Patricia not to open the new air fryer? So when we're making this in direct questions and we have the negative, remember that with imperatives, all the imperatives start with, if they are negative, they start with don't, right? Don't, 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 don't. So every time that you have to change don't, then you're gonna say, could you tell Patricia, not to open the noir fryer, right? Not to, right? That's gonna be, uh, that's gonna be our, right? Uh, sorry, I got this right. That's gonna be the form that we're going to delete, don't, and only use the word not, right? Let's make not. another one. Let's make another, another negative, right? Uh, let's see. Okay. Mayra, don't eat my label food from the fridge. How will you make that? It's negative still. Could you tell Maya not to eat my label food from the fridge? Exactly. Could you tell Maya not, not to eat? Not to. To, not eat. to eat. Uh, In this case, what we're talking about infinitives, right? And I will, I will label those right now. Not to eat my label food from the fridge. Oops. From the fridge, sorry. I want this to be nice from the fridge. Teacher. Right. Now, what happens here, give me a sec. Uh, what happens here is that this, right? This imperative, right? All the imperatives that we have here, right? They will become infinitives, okay? They become infinitive. So right here on the other side, right? Now, bring is going to be to bring. Go is going to be to go. Don't open, not to open. Don't eat, not to eat, right? That is going to be our change, right? So we move from here. 
to here, from imperative to infinitive. Do you understand that? Cody? Yes. Yes? Yes, teacher. Okay. So that, oh, well, that, that means, means, teacher. What? That um, means uh, that um, every time we have an imperative, we uh, have to use uh, infinitive to make an uh, indirect question. Indirect question, that's right. Okay. That's right. That's the, the good thing. Yes, thank you, Susana. Cody, what was your question? The same from Susana. The imperative uh, verbs uh, always uh, are in the in the direct questions, and then they become in the infinitive verbs in the indirect question. Yes, that's right. They become infinitives. That's correct. Very good, we got it right, we got it right. Now we have two more to go, okay? Two more to go. Or does anybody else have a question about this right now? No? Okay, let's go. I'm gonna share again, right? So we have it there. The rest of the video is about the same, right? So we're gonna go ahead and look at the third one. This is the one with if, the one that I was explaining to you at the beginning, right, with if, but we're gonna say it right now again. Like, is he Spanish? Yes, okay. Hi, everyone. By the end of this class. Can you hear? Yes? Yes, yes sir. In class, you learn how to make indirect requests. We use indirect requests when you want to give a message to someone who is not present or not available. Let's say, for example, you call a person and the person is not there. But you leave a message. This is what we call an indirect request. Today we're going to focus on turning yes or no questions into indirect requests. And we're going to use if or whether. So we're going to ask a question indirectly. For example, could you ask Sophia if she's free on Friday? Or another way could be, could you ask Sophia if she's free on Friday? Or another way could be, could you ask Sophia whether she's free on Friday? So let me quickly present some structure. As you can see on the chart, you can see how we turn yes or no questions into indirect requests. So the example that I had given earlier was, Sophia, are you free on Friday? And we turn that into an indirect request by saying, can you ask Sophia if she's free on Friday? Another way that we can possibly do this is by saying, could you ask Sophia whether she's free on Friday? And then a third way that we can actually do it is by saying, could you ask Sophia whether or not she's free on Friday? So all of those three ways are just different forms on how we can ask the same thing. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to write a couple of questions, and then we're going to practice turning those questions into indirect requests. So let me just uh, uh, write the question here, and then we will uh, turn that into an indirect request. So uh, let's say, for example, we have the first one. Do you ha uh, Jennifer, do you have a date for the party? So how are we going to change this? Well, first of all, we can either ask with can or could. So we won't be polite. So we want to say could you, right? Could you? And then in this case, we're going to change the verb to ask. Right, could you ask uh, Jennifer if she has a date for the party. All right, so what we did was we added could you, and then we uh, that follows the verb, ask, and then that follows uh, the object, Jennifer, and that follows if. All right. Could you ask Jennifer if, and here is the... Sorry, can you listen to him? Barely, right? Just a little, teacher. Just uh -huh. a little. Just I'm trying. Okay, I'm trying. I have 100 on the audio here. Well, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> the message that we want to give. If she has a date for the party. Notice that we don't include the 
auxiliary verb in this kind of question. So that will be one way to put it. Another way could be, could you ask Jennifer whether she has a date for the party. That could be another way to do it. And finally, one uh, last way that we want to learn as well is, could you ask Jennifer whether or not date for the party. Okay. So on the first one we use if, on the second one we use just the word uh, whether, and then we use whether or not. Uh, and then uh, the message uh, did not change. So I'm going to go ahead and color that in green just so that you can see that it did not change. Notice that in this case, we are no longer given a message but asking a question instead. And so therefore, the verb that we uh, use is no longer tell, but uh, we use the verb ask. So what I would like for you to do next, I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, write a couple of more questions here. And this time, I would like for you to try them out, see if you can turn those questions into indirect request, I want you to do it in the three forms that we just um, did at this time. All right, so let me just change the size on there so you can quickly see it. So, Jennifer, do you have my number? This is actually the example that is here. Could you okay, uh, I'm sorry, I, I just got tired. I cannot listen to him, uh, to him at all. So, <laughs> let's go ahead and continue working. Now, I'm gonna put just this right here. Okay, now I'm gonna put here some, uh, what, uh, some yes, no questions, right? That we are going to make. And we're gonna put here this for uh, some people, right? Uh, This is the first one, right? Number one, I'm gonna put three, right? I'm making this with you right now. And the next one, right? We're gonna go here. These are the questions, okay? These are the questions. So I want you to go ahead and try to make the indirect questions. Right. The, message, the messages are for Azucena, Luis, and Miss Kitty. Can you hear me? It's raining crazy here. So I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, teacher. A little bit. A little bit. A little. A little. Okay. So we're making these questions right here, right? The yes, no questions. We're making them uh, directly to Azucena. Luis and Kitty. Let's see. How would you make the indirect questions, Patricia? I see you want to participate. Uh, <laughs> no, teacher. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> These are just no questions. The other ones I know they, they in the in the in the book they are with a simple present, but that's too easy for you. You are free at dance. Right, you are pre advanced. So I would like you to go ahead and try to make it with another type of question. Yes, still, yes, no questions, right? But with other tenses. 
For example, we say here, uh, right, Azucena, should we start now? Could you, uh, could you, in this case, remember the structure that he's giving could us? You ask, could you ask Azucena if, if should we start now? If, uh -huh, if we should start now, if we. Uh, Miss. Miss. Uh, I, I write, so could you tell us to send it? Sorry. <laughs> could you ask? In this case, could. we're using could you ask. Uh -huh. Could you ask or could you tell is the same. Right. But could, in this could case, you tell us to send it if we start now, it's not, it's not good. Uh -huh. The thing is that with could you tell, right, we're giving a statement that is number one. And here we're, we're using just no question. So it is already a question. So we say, could you ask Azucena, Azucena, if we should start now, right? If we should start now, or could you ask Azucena whether we should start now, right? Two options, if or whether, right? I, if or whether. I was thinking of whether, whether yeah. or not. <laughs> Not the bad weather right now, but yes, weather. <laughs> okay, let's go with next. Luis, uh -huh. how can we make this? Could you ask? Could you ask Luis whether you were watching TV last night? Could you ask Luis? Could you ask Luis if whether if or, or if, not? Uh -huh. Oh. Yes. Who is the subject? You, we're asking Luis. We, you were, you were, or oh, were you? Yes. Could you ask if Luis here? If you, you were. were. You was, no. Were. Luis. Could you ask Listen Luis. to me, listen. Uh, Luis is the if, subject. If, if I he, watch you. No, if I, no. <laughs> <laughs> Are you with the he, she, he, if he was? Parece piña de ah. <laughs> If he, because it's Luis. It's Luis, people. It's Luis. Were you watching TV last night? Very hard. <laughs> Could you ask Luis whether or if he was watching TV last night? Teacher, what is the point of this indirect question? Oh, they are very useful in real life, right? Uh, in, it seems like a sarcastic question when you are fighting with uh, other people and no. you say you use another people to to ask to the person that we that you are fighting. In. Could you ask Luis if he if he want to talk oh. to me or something <laughs> <No>. like that? <laughs> yeah, it, it, but it's just if the person is not there, you can use them, right? But they are very useful. They are very useful. Now let's do the one for Miss Guti. Guti, teacher, I have a question with, with this. Sorry, I have a question with this sentence and. Uh -huh. In case we need uh, to use weather, um, weather or not, or only weather? Only weather, or because weather, weather is substituting if. If is substituting if. weather. Uh, so mm -hmm. they are similar. Yes, in this structure, they are. In this structure, as you say. When do we use uh, weather or not? In it another depends. class. Ah, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. That because you good. will get confused. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Thank I will you just tell you whether or not choices. Ah, okay. Okay, okay. okay. very good. Thank you. It's You're good for me. <laughs> now, Guti, is the restaurant closing now? How can we ask her that? Can you, uh, could you ask Guti if the restaurant is closing now.
uh, is closing now. I don't know. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, Could you ask Guti if the rest, because she works in the restaurant. So we want to go to the restaurant. So, hey, Guti, if, right, is the restaurant closing? Right. So, could you ask her? Ah, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Right, she is in Pollo Campero and we are here in the house and we want we want to go eat a telepizza, right? So we're gonna ask her. But I don't have saldo, nobody has saldo, only Patricia. So Patricia, could you ask Woody if the restaurant is closing now? Right? So she's going to ask her. Very good. Now, are we clear with this type of uh, questions? Here, look at this. We made the examples where should modern past progressive and present progressive so we can make it with any other tense not only simple present in the video is with simple present which is the easiest one right but we can make it with any other tense right now let me turn up my air okay. now let's go ahead and watch the last one it's 8 50 that's why i don't like this class because it takes the time goes like this. Teacher, but but the clue uh, uh -huh. the clue for us um, can be that if we have um just no question we are going to use um, you ask? if or or whether mm -hmm. could you ask if whether mm -hmm. okay if okay. it's a statement you ask could you tell that uh mm -hmm. we tell we have that. to use that exactly. oh, okay okay thank you and with imperatives we use infinitives okay now we'll go with the last one hopefully we have time hi everyone by the end of this class you'll learn how to make indirect requests so we use indirect requests when you want to give a message to someone who is not present or not available Let's say, for example, you call a person and the person is not there, but to leave a message. This is what we call an indirect request. Today, we're going to focus on turning WH questions into indirect requests. For example, let's say we want to know what time a particular event starts. Um, and we want to leave the message. So uh, could you ask Sophia what time the party starts? This is what we're going to be doing throughout this lesson. So let's try to make sense on how we turn WH questions into indirect requests. So first of all, let me just uh, write down these couple of questions that we see here, this, those two WH questions. And I also want to write down the formula, if you will, in order to change a WH question into an indirect request. So I want you to notice the first question, right? So it says, Jeff, when does the party start? This is the message that I want to give to, let's say, Jeff receptionist. And so I want to make that uh, by saying, can you ask Jeff when the party starts? This is how we turn this WH question into an indirect request. So what exactly is it that we did? Well, first of all, we added, can you ask, as I mentioned, let me highlight that in a particular color. I'm going to go ahead and choose yellow this time. I included Jeff, that's the object, right? So we include Jeff, that's the object, okay? And then I include the WH word. I'm going to go ahead and highlight this in another color just to make sure that we're getting this, all right? when and then uh, finally we include the statement if you will all right the, uh, and so that's what this is at this point let me go ahead and uh, color this in red to make sure that we are understanding this so um, i want you to notice a couple of things from this one is that this is a wh question uh, and therefore we need to use the auxiliary does in this case this auxiliary disappears so it's no longer going to be present in our indirect request. Uh, the next thing is that because this disappear, the verb also needs to match with the uh, subject, right? So because the party is third person, this verb 
needs to have an S as you can see there. I'm going to go ahead and put that in green just to make sure that you can clearly see what's happening. So that's what happened in our indirect request. Um, and um, similar thing happens whenever you do the second one. Sophia, what time should I pick you up? If you notice, this is in the form of a question. So should I pick you up? But whenever we change it to an indirect request, the, f the way that we ask is by, conti we continue to follow, can you ask or could you ask? And then it follows the object. The object happens to be Sophia. Then WH where is what time? And instead of us saying, should I pick you up? We say, I should pick her up. Because remember, we're giving the message to, let's say, Sophia's receptionist. And what we want to do is we want for her to give her that message. So at this point, what I want to do is I want to uh, just point out a couple of other. Okay. Next, he's going to make some other examples, right? So let's make ours. Let's make ours. Now I'm gonna put here some other examples I have. Okay. Let's use them here. Right. Always oh, directing this to someone else. That's one. Number two. Mm. Okay, we have three right here. These are WH questions. Remember the changes we need to make, right? When they go back to the form. Veronica, why is he unhappy? Silvia, see that you want to participate, not yet? <laughs> I don't know, teacher, is Veronica? I don't know, without example. Mm -hmm. Let's see, Veronica, yes, why is, could you, uh -huh. could you, could you ask? So, uh, could you ask Veronica? Could you ask Veronica? Veronica. Uh, why, why is he unhappy? Why is he? Why? Why he is unhappy? Remember, it goes back to the sentence form. When he right? is. Um, why he is unhappy? Remember what he's what he does with the verb with the simple present. Right, that it changes back to the to the statement for subject verb complement. Right? Why mm -hmm. is he unhappy? Now let's go ahead and do the next one with Adrian. Adrian, where has Lucy been to? Could you ask Adrian? Could you ask Adrian you where has Lucy been to? Have been uh, no. A statement oh. form. Sentence. Where? Where Lucy? Lucy? Lucy, Where? Lucy, Where? Has, Lucy has, been to. has been Lucy has been Lucy has been too. Very huh? well. There you are. You got it. And Rosa, why did Louis quit his job? Could, Could you ask Rosa, Rosa what Louis did do? Uh, Louis, what Louis did did quit his job? Yeah, his did job. Quit. Why, Louis? Did it quit? Did it quit? Oh, uh, yes, did quit. No, the verb in past. The verb uh, in past. Big question. What is the past of quit? Quit. 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 Yeah. Uh huh. Why, Louis, quit his what job? Quit? 
grass, rosa, white grass. Ah, we, we don't use did because did is only used for questions. And here we the already question. have could you. In this indirect question, teacher, are you a, a uh, are you using a, an affirmation in the yes, in the question? We're using a sentence form, a statement form. It's like saying, Rosa, why did uh, Louis, sorry, Louis, why did Louis uh, eat my sandwich? Right? Could you ask Rosa? Could you ask Rosa? <clears throat> Why Louis eats my sandwich? Because why Louis? Why? Could you ask Rosa? Why, why, why Louis ate my, my sandwich? Ah, yes, because it's in past. Mm -hmm. right. So okay. in this case, in this case, teacher, uh, when we uh, make the indirect question, mm -hmm. we ah. Uh, we suppose that we answer with a question, right? But we have to do it in a, as if it were a sentence. As <laughs> if it, like when you, you know that's that true. Listen, the question is here. The question form is here. Uh -huh. this, is, this, is, this is the question form. Auxiliary subject and the complement of the question. Right. But the the complement, uh, um, mm -hmm. it become like if we are making a sentence. Yes. But with wh question. Exactly. Because we are why, what, where, where, something when, like that. etc. Yes, that's uh, correct. That okay. is right. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> this class been with a lot of examples, okay. <laughs> now, any questions about this, guys? Any questions? No questions. My, my only question, teacher, is about and the first one. Uh -huh. uh, could, you ask, could you ask Veronica why he is unhappy? In my yes. mind, I, I think that the correct is, could you ask Veronica why is he unhappy? <laughs> uh -huh. But that, that, that's why, by mind. That's why indirect questions are always so difficult because up to the advanced level, we have learned that the question goes with a WH word, auxiliary and subject, but this time we have to change it out, right? So that's why right now your brain is like, what is happening here? <laughs> Yes, but you will make it. You will make it. You'll see. Yes. <laughs> okay, guys. Okay. So we're going to stop right here. Okay. And I will see you tomorrow. I'm going to put the class for tomorrow. If you can connect, that will be amazing. So we can finish with section three. Bring questions if you need to. Right. And we can make more examples as we did today. Okay. Okay, okay, teacher. Okay, teacher. Okay, okay. teacher. It's been a pleasure. Bye bye. Good night. Bye bye. Have a nice night. Bye bye. 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 Bye b